Hey there guys, it's Metro and we are back with another golf video. This time we're taking another look at another type of golf ball. This is the E12 Bridgestone Contact specifically. It's a very interesting ball to me. I've been very interested in playing Bridgestone for a while. My uncle has converted. I know a lot of people who are very high on Bridgestone and it seems like an interesting product to me. So I saw this and I saw a lot of people saying like, you know, I was looking at like balls that were being reviewed by other people and a lot of people were talking about this ball is like the best to be like anti-slice okay so i don't really feel like i battle a slice i do have a fade i often miss the ball right especially with the driver but it's certainly not a slice and it's gotten a lot better over the years but when i saw what they said about the ball i was like oh okay this is a very interesting product to try because we're going to put it to the test so what it says here is New Bridgestone E12 contact is straight distance you can see. Okay, very powerful words out of the gate. This true game changer is a new contact force dimple, which features a unique structure with a raised area in the center and an outer portion that slows horizontal rotation during flight. The raised area allows for 38% more contact with the club face at impact than traditional dimples. That's a large number, 38%, yielding a much more efficient transfer of energy and improved core activation. The result is faster ball speed and straight distance with every club in the bag. So we bought the uh, yeah matte red. I love the color. It's awesome looking. There's a bunch of stuff here that you could take a look at if you're interested, but apparently what they're after here is they've made like dimples with like things in the middle of them. You'll see... Yeah, so a uh, contact force dimple. So, so they're boasting about uh, apparently like, you know, longer distance, but also they keep talking about straight, 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 straight distance you can see. So let's see how it performs out on the golf course. I will say that again, it feels quite different off the driver. They said the same thing about the uh, Callaway Super Soft Max, if you didn't see that review. It's supposed to feel different, I guess, but it certainly did. I guess I pushed it a bit. I don't know. It felt like it was a really good strike. Went way right into the trees here. So we have an awkward second shot, as always. But uh, yeah, so far, I do feel like, I mean, this strike should not have gone as far as it did. So maybe there's something to it. We'll see. Uh, it's it's quite interesting like they actually feel like heavy off the club like it, it feels like it's hitting the club harder like the club is kind of getting stopped almost by the ball so i guess that's you know they're telling the truth that uh the dimple situation there is quite interesting i don't know a lot of this stuff to me screams like placebo effect like it's like if that was the case why does every golf ball not do it so i don't know the answer to that question Tough double there, man. That second shot really killed me, but yeah, not bad. Uh, I say so far off the putter, doesn't feel any different. Uh, wedges didn't really, you know, didn't really feel any different, but I overthink things a lot anyway, as it is. So if there was going to be somebody who was going to fall for these tricks, it's certainly going to be me. T number two here. This is going to be an important one for this ball. I, a lot of times kind of leak one right and it gets caught up in the trees and I lose it. It's a very tight fairway. This will be a good test for a ball that's supposed to fly longer and straighter than the competitors. I'm not really going to call them slices or anything like that. They're not really even fading that much. They're just starting way out right. Luckily, it's a red ball. So hopefully we did clear the trees and we should be able to find it. So far, 0 for 1, man. Not a good start for this ball. Cannot find it. It's got to be here somewhere. Uh, I guess it's probably lost, though. So um, yeah, earlier in the year, this grass was not tall, so you'd be able to find balls. But hit it very well. Ball does feel very hot off the face, but still not going straight and uh, not any easier to find when you hit it in tall, tall grass. Very conscious of that shot, man. And I'm glad that we got out of it, but these last three rounds I've played, I have been absolutely destroyed by trees. Like I played with my uncle just the other day and it was the best ball striking I've had all year. And I shot 97 and that's because I was constantly behind trees and every single shot I hit always got caught up in them.
Okay, that might be one of the best approach shots I've hit in a very long time. At 85 yards, and I will say it hit the green and stopped on a dime. Like, I cannot believe that. Okay, next up we have a medium par three. This is usually a pretty good hole for us. We've been striking the irons inconsistently, but when we hit it right, it should be right distance. There is definitely something different about the contact on this ball. It's one of those things, it's like, if this was legit, if this is objectively better, then why isn't every ball line producing something like this? They're saying it's supported by science, you know what I mean? Then how are you the first to realize it? <laughs> it doesn't even make sense. Golf's been around this long, it's really hard to believe. Like, if that's the case, why are there even dimples? What are the purpose of dimples on golf balls? Is it not, like, curving or going straighter or farther? No, not really. It's that, and so far, I mean, we're only three holes in, but so far I've hit some really bad shots with it and uh, it doesn't really feel like they're offline. It just feels like they're kind of pushed out or something like that. So we'll see as we go. Yeah, I often lose a ball right and I was definitely hoping this would solve that. Same thing, three drives in a row. Starts right, fades right. Really good contact with everything but the driver so far today. I'll have to say that for sure. All right. You gonna give me that or? No? Wow, okay. Okay, next up, medium length par five, big dog leg to the right at the end. We keep it in the fairway. We have a very good shot at making another par, which is mid par there too, so that's really good. All right, shorten things up, choke down a little bit, more compact swing. Just kind of hit it a little bit down the left side of the fairway. It wasn't great contact, but it should do the job. Caught the uh, natural slope of the hole too. It landed like all the way back there and rolled all the way down here. So it was really good. A little bit of an awkward situation here, but not a problem. Just gotta land it soft. Almost off the back, hung on there. First cut it looks like. That's crazy, double there. Such a, some really good shots on that hole. I tell you, it's crazy, man. My scoring has been very bad, but my striking at times has been excellent. Like that wedge was great. I just pulled it and hit a little bit too long. I have a lot of trouble with that. I feel like the distance is hard to gauge when I'm not hitting a full swing, so unfortunate. Really, really, really good contact. Just the right of line again. Didn't really fade though. That's the thing I have to say. You know, even though I'm not satisfied with these strikes where they're landing, I do feel like they'd probably be a lot worse. Maybe the ball's controlling some of that. Maybe I would lose that ball entirely. Instead, just in the right rough. Ah, disappointed with this hole, man. Two to the right. Don't know what's going on. Obviously something with my swing. But uh, that was a really nice shot out of those trees there. It landed 
not where it should have and just again did not check up at all this ball is not a i don't know it's probably the greens we've always had this issue up here but i feel like hitting the tp5 that probably would have not ran off the green sucks because there was like two really well hit balls like honestly both that were hit into the right there were perfectly hit center of the club face felt really good and uh just didn't go where i wanted them to okay this is short par four down the hill usually do not hit driver here i'm going to avoid doing that again since even though the balls aren't slicing or anything like that like they said they wouldn't still losing everything right so just gonna hit hybrid hopefully keep a little straight Straight flight, a little punch shot here, and uh, let it roll out. Okay, I did not do that, <laughs> but uh, it's fine. It actually is in fine shape up there. This is a nice result. Uh, did hit it a bit right. I think I saw it bounce off the front there and roll down, so could be better. I actually really made a good contact with that one. A little bit too much. I uh, thought that, you know, that stance I had was going to affect things, so hit it way too far. Another 150 some yard par three over that bunker there. We have to make sure we get it there. So let's see, wind's pretty heavy today. Hopefully it won't be too big of a deal, but just need to make good contact. Uh, I feel like again, with these balls, the contact has been pretty good with the irons, but yeah, uh, not as good as this guy's. Look at this. <laughs> this is always funny whenever you see something like this. Another shot that's just gone way right. This time it faded quite a bit. Like, I don't, all these people who say like, oh, these balls, they're not workable. Uh, the, it's even in the branding. It's like, it actually says it on the box, doesn't it? Yes, longer and straighter flights. It's like, okay, well, I mean, why do you even say stuff like that? It's obviously false. Like, I don't know how every golf ball can say something like that. And it's never, they're just lying, right? Like, how did they get away with that? Don't really think I could hit any shot in the air. I'm gonna take a seven iron and kind of just slam it into the front there. Hopefully it gets on the green. Okay, we've arrived at the hardest hole for me, at least on the golf course. Very long par four, and it really punishes any shot right. So I typically used to have a uh, approach where we'd kind of hit a high draw over the tree. That's long gone. So now we have to probably just, yeah, we definitely can't hit driver here with the way the shape's been, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, I think if we can get a hybrid started out a bit left, it will stay where we want it. Problem is too, when you hit the driver, if you do not hit it at the right spot, it's gonna ricochet really hard off the fairway and go pretty much dead into that little pond area over there. That's gone. Yep. Okay, so I think that's pretty much every single tee shot other than that duff on number three that have gone, yeah, many yards right of line. Not a good day today. The problem with being really long on this hole is you have this huge ridge to contend with. We've had a few on camera now where we kind of, we really need to aim it at very far left and let it ridge down because it's going to really impact. There's a huge amount of break here. That was really good. It was a little too much left, but it just shoots right, like hits that ridge and just goes 90 degrees. Oh. 
very satisfying, especially after getting that into the woods. I do think, you know, contact was solid. It felt really good. I think it's like very noticeably, uh, it's, it's different than a regular ball, that's for sure. But whether it's better, I don't really feel like I'm playing any better, so it's hard to tell. Uh, this hole though, it's time to turn it on now, so. We end up being very lucky out of this. Usually if I hit it to the left, it kind of catches the front of these weeds, but I guess I didn't make great contact with it. It didn't go as far as it normally does. Boxes were a little bit back too, I suppose, but yeah, usually if I hit a driver on this hole and I hit it to the left, it will be by that chipmunk there. Obviously not hitting out of that. Another really lucky, really lucky situation here. I'm surprised, I don't know where it landed, but I figured with it fading, it would be lost. But yep, it's just uh, just short of these weeds. Could have been a lot worse. Third shot was very good. Just need to get it up and down now. All right, bogey there. Not the best we played the hole, but I would say that, yeah, we had three really good shots and uh, just one. You know, that small pitch there kind of let us down. Didn't really get it where it needed to. Hugely downhill par three. This has been a bit of a conundrum for us this year because we've kind of gone from hitting a bunch of different clubs here. But I think approach wedge is going to be the one. It's usually about like 125, but obviously hugely downhill and rather be short than long. Kind of smack the ground first. I don't even think it was that bad though. Problem is if you're too short on this hole, it usually runs all the way down left side by the cart path. Yeah, it's gonna be a tricky little lie there. No, I'm just kidding. We won't be playing it off the cart path, but yeah, as expected. Probably hit the ridge there and just rolls all the way down here. Uh, it looked extremely good. That was a very hard shot. Honestly, there's not a lot of green to work with from down there. Let's see. You'll see my first reactions up here. Oh, yeah. It is very good. Landed probably just shy of the hole. Rolled out a bit to the right. So that's very good. Oh. Oh, my God. I cannot believe that did not go in. All right, we have a pretty short par four. Usually it's, uh, I mean, the length isn't that short, but the actual dog leg is what makes it so short. Basically just two short irons. Okay, didn't hit that one great. A little low in the face, but it was essentially perfect. Really, yeah, couldn't really do anything better than that. All right, so not great to have bogeys on all these holes, but consistent striking at least feels good. I know what I'm doing wrong. Is the ball helping? Not really. All right, another very short hole, massively downhill yet again. My big issue is kind of overdrawing it to the left. Need to avoid doing that. I've been hitting hybrid here, and I wouldn't mind doing it today, especially with the red ball, but I don't really want to invite that into the video. Already playing kind of poorly too, so let's just keep it simple. Hit a nice little low iron. It's basically just two low irons and you're good. Extremely well hit, probably best of the day. A little on the outside of the club, but 
just pushed it a tad right should be on the right side of the fairway i just saw like a marmot like sprinting after a bird i wanted to be like are you new like those things fly you're not gonna catch that I guess we got a green regulation, hit it way left of the line this time, but I'd rather that. Obviously right is dead basically in that sand bunker. So does it count if you're on the fringe? Is that still a green in regulation? I don't know. Always a nice respite from the uh, very hot weather we're having today. Nice little shady area. We have this unfortunate tea box here. It's, it's in bad shape. But uh, actually, it's better better than it was. But yeah, so this is a tough one. Usually, it's tough to just get a tee in the ground. And uh, I think we'll be hitting driver here today. Usually, if it's anything in the middle of the box, driver is kind of the play. It's a very short but extremely uphill. So we just need to get it as close as possible to make it a little bit easier on us. Definitely the best driver contact of the day. You even pulled it a small amount, but yeah, pretty much dead center of the face, I think. It's slightly low, but really good. Right, this is really close to the green. If I could hit the ball a little bit farther, we'd have a chance at probably being right up there, but yeah, it's pretty good. This is definitely the closest I've been, and it was hit really, really well, so just gotta fly it up in the air. And it's actually pretty flat right here, too. This is nice. Barely got it up high enough. Yeah, not even. It didn't even make the hill. It's unfortunate. All right, my favorite few holes coming up here. Love these ones wide open usually can actually support a draw or a fade depending on the line and uh, Pretty long par four here, but I feel really confident. And not often you hit a push fade and you're in the fairway. How about that's awesome, right? I love this hole. Uh, so anyway, we have to not do that again. If we hug the trees to the right at all, we're gonna be in serious trouble. So we need to make sure we leave this one left. Did exactly what I can't do, hit it right, but we got very, very lucky from what I can tell. Hit a tree, probably square, and bounced all the way into the fairway. So let's see where we end up. Yeah, I don't know what it hit, hit something. One of these guys here. Thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate you looking out for me last round. I had absolutely no luck with trees. Today we're getting a bit better. That's surprising actually very long took too much of a swing there i guess way long please go ah. That was such a great putt, exactly where I wanted to hit it. I was a little worried. I didn't think I was going to get it there. Felt a little slow off the face, but God, that's a huge, 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 huge bogey save. One of the hardest holes on the course for me as well. It's so nice. Big time fade hit a bit on the inside, I think, but was a really good contact. Felt really good off the clip face. Have a really long putt across here. This is a birdie putt, so not bad. Playing the hole pretty well. Tap in par. Feels like I'm actually playing golf. That was really good. 
Uh, the strange thing about that is, is I did not mean to hit that ball on that line. I think I pulled it a bit. It broke a ton. Never actually had that putt to that location before. Very good, I got a little lucky there. Okay, so pretty medium par three again, but flag is down so I can't shoot it. Usually it's about seven iron for me, so we'll see. Hopefully that's gonna be good. Didn't really feel like I made really good contact, but it's long. Looks like I got the back of the green there, so still don't know where the pin location is, but hopefully we'll have a favorable chip in. Such a bad chip, man. I should have just putted it, honestly. I didn't actually realize it was on the fringe. I thought it was actually off the green, but I didn't even take my putter with me. I'm like, okay, let's just hit a wedge. Big mistake there. Long, 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 long. It's good work to make bogey, honestly. A very bad strike there. Pretty tired. It's quite warm, fatigued. Definitely fatigue, definitely setting in today. All right, disaster here. Faded it when I did not want to yet again and uh, into these woods. So we have to drop and uh, take our medicine on this hole. shot it's par five so we basically have to hit it stiff here otherwise it's triple huh? okay pretty good have a decent chance here let's see what we can do all right so that's the round it wasn't great, but scorecard will be in the description. There's a spreadsheet with every single round, every single 18 hole round I've played this year with a picture of the scorecard if you want to see. But let's talk about the actual golf ball. So it says on the box, 38% more surface contact between the golf ball and club face for more efficient energy transfer. I guess that means you're supposed to hit the ball further, right? Traditional dimple has energy lost with large dimple void between golf ball and club face. If it were true, like if factually, like objectively true, why is every other golf ball on the market not doing it? It's a question that I have that I don't have an answer to. It did feel like there was something different about contact, especially with the long clubs. Driver was number one for sure. But I had the same feeling with the Callaway Max. I thought that was like pure placebo uh, and I've been playing those balls and they've been performing well. They definitely do feel different than this this ball, like regular balls in general. They're slightly bigger if you've never uh, heard of those. Uh, so did I hit the ball further? Maybe, honestly. Uh, there was some shots that are like, wow, that was really far compared to where I would normally hit it. And uh, the problem was a lot of the times they weren't hit well. Like it was fading pretty substantially. So I was like, huh, interesting. That's probably... Maybe the ball doing something there, okay? But right on the box, like literally it says engineered for straight distance. Honestly, like I don't ever want to read that again. Please don't ever put that on a golf ball box again because that, that's just absurd. This is now like the third or fourth ball that I've seen. It's like, oh, super straight and all this stuff. It's like, dude, you're lying. I mean, wh why lie? What, what's the point? Like, it's just not true. The golf ball is never going to correct for problems with the swing and the path and everything. It's like, it's just false. Like I, I'm hitting fades when I don't want to with this golf ball. So how's that any different than any other golf ball? I, you know what I mean? Like I, what's the point? Why, why even put that on there? But it also says contact force dimple 
for straight distance longer and straighter flight with driver and somehow also more spin with increased friction for better spin around the green. So I hit like one ball that was like actually really good. Uh, it checked up that was on number two. That was hit like extremely well and it spun a fair amount. Every other shot just didn't really, like I didn't really feel like there was any spin uh, like around the greens and more spin in the air means more offline shots. So frankly, I don't know if, I think I need to find a ball that doesn't spin ever. Like, like I hit a ball that just goes <laughs> like that and doesn't spin. That would probably be better for me. But um, honestly, like I, I feel like a bit offended because I hate that these balls keep advertising like straight, 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 straight. It's like, no, it's not true. You're not going to make me hit the ball straight. I basically don't ever hit a driver straight. And that did not change with this golf ball. But I do think it might have been slightly more, uh, you know, more distance. It did feel different off the driver, especially. And it was interesting. I mean, I love the red ball. That's one of the main reasons why I even purchased it was because they had the matte red. I absolutely love a matte red golf ball. Red is my color. Let's put it that way. So uh, the other problem with these balls, $30 for a dozen. That is a bit too expensive for a gimmick. $30 and they are not the easiest things to get a hold of. I had to buy them online. They don't sell them anywhere around here. So uh, it took me a while for this to even arrive. So $30 for this dozen, absolutely not. I will not buy another dozen of these. They did nothing for me uh, other than the fact that they were nice and bright and red. They were pretty cool and they felt slightly hotter off the face. Not, I'm gonna have to say, not really worth the purchase. So hope it helps. I'd love to hear your thoughts if you've played this ball and what do you think about I'd love to hear your thoughts on what do you think about balls that say something like engineered for straight distance. Yeah. See you guys in the next one.